What's up, guys? Childish Play here with some more Summoner's War action. Yeah! Oh, no, you bad. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Childish. We're back at it again with the next episode of Educate and Dominate, where we bring some of the best of the best in the game, giving you that insight to take your game to the next level. We have none other than YDCB on the line. What's up, YDCB? What's up? It's, <laughs> well, it's weird. <laughs> You're... You're you're the first well you should be honored. You should be honored. You're the first man and I'm talking to at five AM in the morning over the phone. Long distance call. I'm half Nick oh okay, I'm I'm just too oh, much in It's out there, it's but, out there, it's oh, that's it. All right. But this is it almost as awkward as, as this can get. It's okay. I've never been on a phone call with someone with another man at five AM in the morning. It's all, it's, all, it's all about that bromance, baby. It's all about that bromance. Romance. Here we go. So, for those that don't know, which there better not be anybody that doesn't know, YDCB has been in the game for quite some time. Uh, one of the top YouTube channels in the game, and controversially, uh, or what's the word here? Con controversially? What's that? Is that a fail? Uh, think, no, no, that that is I, actually I, I, a, a I think, correct word. I think that, yeah. Yeah. I think that is. So, yeah, you know, they could be considered that one of the uh, the best youtube channels out there when it comes to entertainment and education all right so um let's go ahead and get right into it ydcb we got ourselves um a lot of people that have seen your content um but a lot of people that don't know you personally so why don't you kind of go ahead and get into the uh um you know how you got into the video gaming world and, and your way kind of into summoner's war all right uh where should i start i guess uh well i've been a gamer since since computers um, were introduced like you know I mean you're I mean, no no offense but we're you're pretty old I think I'm pretty old I think you're older but anyway you get the idea like computers and internet right dude I'm, it, I'm, it was it came in somewhere in between somewhere in the in the in the late nineties right or something like that right some right. people weren't even born then but anyway like when computers first came out and internet first came out right online you know the the thing with the online online gaming well of course firstly when internet first came out, everyone was into porn. We we weren't really into gaming, but then, <laughs> but then there was online. Then then the games came along, and then we, you know you started to be able to compete with people. Uh, you know, in, in online games. Uh, I think the first game I played was what I think was Counter Strike that I actually first went um got pretty serious into, and then um onto onto Dota. And League of Legends and Dota, Starcraft nice. and and so on and and you know the, the stuff and and um, I had well how did I get into Summoner's War I had this this friend who was like one of the top top ten Starcraft players in Asia so I, I was always competing with him it, whatever game we were doing we were doing uh, whether we were playing uh, uh, Starcraft or Dota or what we always had this friend although we were friends in fact we were like colleagues because he was also um, in the navy with me and uh you know we always had this sort of friendly competition between us and um so one day he like sent me an invite he didn't ask me to play this game he, he was like you know when you send the invite through facebook and um you get like a free like ferry or something yeah so he sent me an invite and i was like this korean words over this invite and i was like because when normally when he picks a game it, it, when he picks a game it would be a, a decent game so i gave it a shot and um i went i the first time I logged into the game, the first time I clicked on Summoner Swore, I mean, tapped on the button on my tablet, uh, the music. <laughs> I know all of us play without music now, but the first time I, I, I pressed that button, the music caught me. I was like, oh, this game seems pretty good. Just from the music alone, when, when we <laughs> log in. Yeah, seriously, I was like, oh, this game. Because this was my first ever uh, mo mobile game. I never oh, okay. played mobile games before. And then I was like taken aback, but wow, mobile games have have evolved into, you know, they have, the intro right. and everything. It seems like it was something out of a PlayStation. So so it, it, I, I was like uh, enchanted by this, you know, the music. And then I went in, oh yeah, the, 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 the interface is a little, you know, it's not as good as a computer's interface, but, you know, it's not bad. It's not bad. Uh, and, well, how did, when did I actually seriously get into Summoner's Wars then? Was when, uh, well, I pulled my pulled my Valor Jewel <laughs> and from my first premium pack, right? Yeah. And I was like, yeah, this game pretty good. Pretty easy, you know? No big deal. 
Five star. Yeah, it's like pretty easy. That was, it's net fives. It's like best monster, net highest <laughs> great monsters. The net five. I got it on my first premium pack. Pretty good game. Pretty good. Generous company and shit. Yeah, we all know now that it's a shit company, but. <laughs> <laughs> you're horrible oh man like it, so if this preview hasn't given you an idea of what this interview is gonna you know gonna go down get get excited it's about to get crazy up in here <laughs> all right my man so why don't you talk about your guild your current girl when you got into it you know some of the players that are in your community um and uh you know how you guys have worked together to kind of get up there in the top ranks okay so how did i first well this guild started um back in global back in global right um I was in top 100, and I was constantly um, doing revenge wars with, uh, with players like Cold Steel back then in Global, and no, actually not Cold Steel, um, Jim loved me, right? Back then, he was like one of the top players, and um, I was also doing revenge wars with uh, this uh, Dr. LOL, which was also one of the top players. We had like the same lineups, like, you know, back then, it was like Villager, Double Arnolds, and Chloe. This so is like that was that was the shit. That was the black, all right? Back then in, in late 2014. So everyone was running this in top hundred, like two Arnold something and Chloe. And um so Dr. LL was in a guild with uh with my current guild leader, which is like a a, a girl called Sally. And back then I had no guild. And uh well, you know, it's like a really long story, actually. Well, I, I like this girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's always gonna come down to go. Everyone knows your infatuation right. with the ladies of So, so I like this girl, right? But she did not. She she was like, she was like, uh, she didn't like Sally, <laughs> right? She didn't like you know. She didn't like every other girl. Like I think this is a common thing with girls. Like, girl does not like every other girl, even though she might appear to like the girls. She doesn't like the girls anyway. So I was on really good terms with this one girl, and uh, we we went out, you know, and stuff like that. And uh, and she fucking friend zoned me. Oh my god, that broke my heart. But oh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, it's like uh, and so so when the the romance sort of ended, right? It's like uh, it's not going anywhere, right? Then I decided, hey, you know what? Why not? Why not? Uh, why not join a guild? You know, and and see what what a guild gives. Because back then there was no guild wars. Why would you want to join a guild? You know, exactly. So I just thing. I was thinking, um, for the social aspect, join a guild, make some friends, and. From what I knew, like this guild, um, which uh, that Sally uh, was the leader of, had like a few girls, and it's like, hey, it could be fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I decided to join them. Yeah, and, and that was that. So I joined them, and then um, over time, like some of the girls stopped playing, and you know, now, now more now today, I think there's like five, six, seven girls left in the guild, and we started getting better players into the guild and making the guild into like a, a competitive guild like we started only taking people in top 100 or something like that or be a female but even re of recently like they totally stopped taking females just started taking people who are in top 100 and uh yeah so 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 now we're like pro possibly i think top top three guilds or top four guilds in in asia but you know how it is in Asia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know how it is. Game. Like Cypher is like dominating because I mean seriously, if everyone beats everyone, everyone beats everyone and in like the top ten guild wars. No one loses to anyone. Everyone beats everyone. But they have a in all honesty, they have the better defense. Meaning even though we can beat them, even though everyone in top five, top ten can beat them. They will get boosted by the guilds in top 20 because those guilds can't beat their defense. So that's why they are constantly number one right now. Good I don't know why we drifted there. but <laughs> I, I, they, they already know it's going to go all over the place. So it's all good. It's all good. So why don't we go ahead and get back to you then. Um, the next section um, that I call this one is called Zero to Hero where we basically talk about um, your climb from the bottom, you got into the game, you're, you're sitting there, you know, you, you were still talking to them ladies, right? In Fighter 2, Fighter 3, and you're moving up to the ranks. Um, what are some of the key tips that you kind of learned along the way that can benefit the viewers of this uh, uh, community right now? Uh, just, just talk. Just talk the top 100. No, no, just, just talk the top 10. That's what I did. Like, back then, 
in global, there's this one guy, like, when I first played the game, there's this one guy, his name was Pensal. I think everyone who played back in uh, yep. global would probably know him. Like, this guy was a legend. He dumped 100k in the first month. It's like the, the ultimatum of pay to play, right? He has everything. You go to his island, you see full net five. You wonder, wow, these things even exist? Dragons of all five colors. Like, <laughs> yeah. you barely even see one, right? So, that, that, that's, that's where I got. I copied quite a bit of the knowledge, but to uh, t- to be honest, like he's a fucking noob. Like he had some stupid runes that fucked me over. Like you know, that caused me to stop progressing when I should have. Because that's one thing you shouldn't do. As in as in viewers, don't just blindly stalk people. Like you can see runes, you know, um, get an idea, but don't copy. Like, back then, Pensal was doing a triple defense percent Vela Jewel. I copied that blindly, like a like an idiot. That's not how it's supposed to be. Like, some people do certain builds for specific reasons, or perhaps they just want filler runes, or, or, you know, check with them, if possible, check with them, why is it ruined this way? Don't just blindly copy, because it can set you back a couple million mana or something, especially if you're not, if you're not paid to play. If you're, like, free to play every single million mana counts right so you shouldn't you don't want to be wasting mana on the wrong runes i guess that this so how how did i i i climb up the arena ladder was basically uh just looking at builds looking at ideas checking out the meta game in 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 the korean servers like go to the the you know there's this website called cafe neighbor right and okay. it's in korean but you can sort of like translate and um get a rough idea of what the current meta is like there because they're ahead of the game and they're, they're the meta game over there is what the meta game over here is going to shift to in a few months time so if you're ahead of the game, you're ahead of everyone that, right. that's i guess that's 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 my advice for for viewers who want to who want to climb up the ladder gotcha and so is that that i mean that that's a link that you used way back then is it still viable now can people still utilize that um, to you mean to stock to check out the runes of the top ten people? Sure. No, no, no. For the for the Korean server, like or for the for the notes on that cafe website, can they still take a look at that? You know, translate it, and then you know, kind of you know, prepare for the you know upcoming events or whatnot, or or is it something that you know right now it's not you know really in the mix? I still do that. Well, well then if you still, still do, do it, that. everybody yeah. should be able to do that. So good yeah, deal. but it's it's really it takes a lot of work because why? It's all in Korean. You don't even know how to navigate a website, right? Right. It, it takes quite some time. And like my guild, my guild um, actually, you know, gives us links to the relevant, relevant forum posts. And uh, yeah, we just go there and do our own translation. Back at, at, a, at a point in time, we even had a Korean girl in our guild and she would like, you know, help us translate and, and stuff. Gotcha. Good, good deal. Well, uh, let's go ahead and get to some of the units there. Uh, you know, when I think of you and, and, and watching you over the time that you've, uh, you know, grown your YouTube channel, um, I definitely mm-hmm. I definitely have myself a, a, a nice uh, one-word description for you, and that's uh, Trendsetter. There's a lot of units that you've incorporated into your game um, over the past few months that uh, people have definitely picked up on and, and have utilized that to your advantage. And, and some of those um, are going to be uh, Kali and uh, Rogue. So I want to kind of go ahead and talk about that, you know, the mm-hmm. usefulness of it, and then if there is any other units, you know, similar to that, you know, uh, to those, you know, kind of underrated units that kind of, you know, people don't mm-hmm. realize, how can they, how can they use it now in the current meta, you know, in the Conquer ranks or the Guardian ranks? How can they use that to improve their game? <clears throat> Double Copper Randy. That's what's, that's the in thing in Korea. I mean. You've seen some posts on Reddit. This thing, this meta, this you know, this lineup has actually been going on for like two and a half months or so. Double copper, Randy. Like you know, Randy, fire bounty hunter, like defense buff, critical critical strike buff, and you have two coppers running, um, rage blade defense, CD defense, right? And they quit for like 40, 50k with with Randy's buff. That's crazy. Yeah, so that's that's what they're doing in, in Korea. Like that's their their speed team, so to speak. Like you know, to to have a fast clear. Like if let's say I'm running double copper Randy with Chloe, right? Or even if I'm sure that 
you know, I, I won't, my, my coppers can't be killed. I can go Jemire double copper Randy and it will be like an all kill within two turns. Gotcha. But, you know, with regards to the, you know, the current meta being still, you know, predominantly Fireblaze, do you feel that copper is still viable in the top ranks? Um, actually, it's not. Well, if you look at the current metagame now and the metagame one and a half months, two months ago, it's much less fire now. It's sure. actually maybe you will only see it's a lot of Lucian traps now. You know what they do? Yeah. They 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 don't put fire on the defense, but they have the runes. Like double Lucian does around 50, 60k damage, right? And they have the runes to tank that damage. And they don't put fire on their defense. You know? Yeah. They bait your double Lucian in and then you lose to it. It's not really predominantly fire now because, like, if I look at top 100, it's maybe it, the only fire you will see that is m almost always there is gonna be Perna, right? That's the only, you know, really uh, consistent fire unit that is gonna be there in top 100. But other than that, it's a lot of Camilas, a lot of uh, actually mostly Camilas, Eladrils, and Veramosses. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny that it's changed, how much has changed so far, but uh, it is what it is. Like, here's the thing, and, and, you know, with regards to very most, like, you know, a lot of people are upset about it, you know, oh, too OP, this and that, whatever. I'm just kind of glad that the meta kind of changed. It was stuck on that fire, you know, AD mm -hmm. for so long. It was nice to see a change, regardless <laughs> if it was, like, the best change or not, so. I don't uh, know why people are complaining that it's OP. It's a gift. Everyone has one. It's not like you, you need luck. I mean, granted, what's that? Fire living armor, oh no, no, fire beast hunter is not exactly farmable, but eventually it's it's easier to get than any of the let's say Perna, right? Or Zyros. It's something that Comptos gave to, to, to the community to help, you know, whoever was lagging behind to catch up. Because Veramos is like the old I mean look at the current TOA, right? You look at the current TOA, the last boss, like you only need Veramos and you can clear that boss as in the only form of immunity that you need for 99% of TOA and a lot of people you know once like I have friends I know friends in real life that <clears throat> they fuse Veramos and their progression jumped like like it took a quant like they, they took a quantum leap like <clears throat> how should I put they, they were stuck at like Dragon's B, B7 B8 and then now they're doing Dragon's B10 after they fuse Veramos that's how much big of a difference it makes and people should really shouldn't be complaining about something that that come to us gives to you. They rarely give you give give us anything, so we should be thankful for this. Uh, yes, I know I'm thankful. That's for sure. It took me about two years to get it. It seemed like, but I got it. Um, let's see here. So one of the one, units that I wanted to talk about there is Roke. Uh, you know, you definitely <laughs> brought it into the forefront. A lot of people use it, but they didn't ut utilize it the way you do. Um, now, some things that people didn't pick up when they watched your video um, was the fact that you. Um, you know, when you utilize this unit, generally speaking, uh, 99 times out of 100, you're going to be using that first attack. So can you talk about the value of the, of the damage potential when it comes to the first attack versus the second attack? Maybe um, with regards to the, the lower ranks in the arena, how, you know, yeah, maybe this okay. up can be useful? Firstly, um, Rook, Raok, or uh, however you want to call it, Fire Inagami, right? Fire Wolf, Fire Dog, whatever. He... The first skill is Scratch, second skill is Team Up. Scratch has like a higher skill multiplier than Team Up. It hits for more, right? Team And Scratch has a chance to proc additional Scratches. However, Team Up does not have a chance to proc additional Scratches. How I use Raok in my team is basically I get a team so safe that I'm basically just buying time to get lucky with Raok. Because when 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 Rook or Raok gets lucky, he's unstoppable. He just wipes the whole team. So to build a team ar around Rook or Raok, right? You you need a team that can sustain itself while buying time for Rook to get lucky. And you know it's a thirty percent chance to proc additional scratch. You know, in 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 the most unlucky case situation, you probably will finish the game before the draw button before the draw button comes up. That's how I see it. Sure. Yeah, but it only applies really to Arena. Like, I don't think Rook is that effective in, in, in Guild Wars because in Guild Wars, you lack the, the support and sustain to be able to buy time for Rook to get lucky. Because in Guild Wars, everything is really fast-paced. You kill or get killed in the first couple of turns. Yeah. 
Yeah, I even noticed, I remember when you made the switch um, to having uh, speed on too, just to get yourself a little speed to kind of go along with your team. Can you talk a little bit about that and why that was you know, beneficial to you when you utilized them? Yeah, because like I said, I'm buying time for Rook to get lucky. So I, if he moves more because of the additional 40 speed that he gets in slot 2, he will move, he, because of that additional 40 speed, he's able to steal turns if he is paired with, say, uh, Vert, right? A uh, fire vampire. Then he can steal turns from the enemy. Like, generally, generally, unless it's a speed team you're up against, no one has more than 150 speed. So, if you use Vert and, ev and Vert pushes Rook to 100% attack bar, and the enemy was already at 100% attack bar, Rook will steal the turn because he has faster speed. So the more turns he goes, the more more chances to get lucky. Yeah. That that was my uh how I decided to okay swap swap slot two from attack to speed. Sure, the crits don't hit as hard, but they hit more often, and you get more chances to prop additional scratches, which is really the entirety of Rook's Rook's game. Gotcha. And uh, while you were talking about Rogue, you were talking about, uh, you know, the damage multiplier on the first skill. You know, there's mm -hmm. a lot of units out there that um, have some very, very unique damage multipliers or whatnot. But, of course, um, not everybody has the ability to test some of those out, those three-star, four-star units. Um, you definitely got yourself a wide variety of units, um, and you have tried a, 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 a quite a few here that have some unique damage multipliers that not really people, you know, knew about, you know, unless you, you know, ruin them up and test them out. Can you talk a little bit about the units that you've tried or maybe some of the units that you're good as it tries that might, um, you know, motivate somebody to dust a, a, a four-star unit or, or a three-star unit out of their uh, storage box and test them out? Mm -hmm. Well, firstly, these units are, well, what I term as toys. Why do I say toys? Because they, they come after... They come after the core team has been established. A core team that, you know, when, when shit hits the fan, you can bring this core team out and you will win. You know, why you make new toys is you want faster ways to kill shit or you want to perhaps find a new core team that you can make. But firstly, before you make any new experiments, you should. This is, this, this is my advice that you should. <clears throat> have your rune farming content clearing team all ready and set. You know, you must have your AD up, you must have your, your, your TOA farming team up, all rune, your, your, your rune farming team, everything. That's like, we're talking about like 12 or, 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 or so, 6 stars. Then you can look into, okay, what else can I do? What else can I do that, like if you don't pull a net 5, what else can you do? Is it... The game doesn't end just because you don't pull a net 5. Like, I mean, I have shit for luck. I don't pull net 5s that often. Like, my guildies, they pull, they pull net 5s, like, on a weekly basis. It's stupid. <laughs> it's, it's fucking stupid. It's fucking stupid <laughs> game. Uh, I'm taking a look at Varad right now. Doesn't he look so good? I <laughs> said... I... <laughs> he's just there for, like, two purposes. There's, like, TOA hard mode, and... It's just... See Hard mode and on maybe Dragon's B10. Like, but before I had, I was using Barad in Dragon's B10. B10. I was already farming Dragon's B10. He didn't make like a game-changing difference for me. Sure, he makes the run a little bit faster now that I can just go straight for the boss. But ultimately, it doesn't change my game. It's not like um, a Perna Zyros. You know, things that things that change the way you you know the way you play, in, especially in arena. I mean, end game. Well. We're doing everything. Like it's just like life. You 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 get a, you study hard. You get a good job, and and you make money. End of the day, you just want to you just want a hot wife to fuck, right? <laughs> oh, it's the same God, thing. Here we go end again. of the day, <laughs> and, and and in this game, end of the day, you want to dominate arena. You know, you want to you want to shit on everyone. You want to fuck everyone up, right? You want units. You want game changing. End of the day, you want game. You want to be able to win everyone in arena and. Let everyone lose to your defense. That's what you want. There so you to me, Verat doesn't do that for me. He just he just makes rune farming a little faster, and yes. it just makes me spend more crystals on ref ref refueling the energy. It's all all a plan all a plan from come to us. They like give you units that enable you to farm faster, so you can refuel more and they can make more money. Those 
motherfuckers. <laughs> You're horrible. That's awesome. All right. So the next question I got for you um, is the uh, some rune talk when it comes to an underrated and overlooked rune. And what I mean by that is, you know, we got a lot of rune sets now. Um, you know, hopefully they'll, they'll bring out some more here. You know, couple, you know. You know, in a few months here. But with regards to the runes that are utilized, um, there's a lot of them that are utilized in the current meta or the current units and whatnot. But there's definitely some runes that people, your viewers, don't take advantage of uh, when they have the opportunity to. What is your most underrated and overlooked rune type? And, and may, you know, maybe give some ideas or some examples as to situations where people can utilize it to their advantage, given their current Okay. Mood. I think, like, I preach violent revenge all day, every day. You know that, right? Right. right. <laughs> revenge, my favorite rune set. Right? But, you know what? Of late, of late, what's been coming back into the meta game? Resistance. Resistance has been coming back. It's coming back to fuck people over big time. It's like, you look at the team, you see, hey, no, no immunity. Or maybe just a Veramos, right? Why don't I just, you know, use some CC or something and then you go in, boom, resist. Full team resists you. And you're fucked. You know, that happens. And another rune that, is, that has um, caught me by surprise. Like recently was I, I came across a team. I didn't record this, but I came across a team. It was definitely a double illusionable team. It was definitely a double illusionable team. It was like there was no Chloe, it was like wind and water and it's like it's like free food, you know? You go in and then fuck shield runes. And it's not just one set of shield runes, it's like I don't know how many stacks of sh because my Lucian number one, I have two Lucians, like Lucian one and Lucian two. Lucian one does like twenty close to 30k ish on amp okay per unit and like after the amp i think it dealt like 5k damage only or six or less than 10k less than 10k damage okay. to him and th that was it i'm because it's shield runes are three turn like you you can't not amp for three turns your illusions will probably be dead by then so you go in you don't know what runes he has until you go in, you go in and shoot runes, you try, and then you fail. And it's like, oh, fuck this. You know, you don't do him, or, or you know, you try with a different lineup, which you may succeed, but eventually, the aim of his defense was not to let you succeed uh, as easily, and hopefully to bait a Lucian in and get a win or two, which, which is very good. It's, it's, it's a nice idea. I like I, it. I like it a lot, too. Yeah, definitely, definitely. All right. Um, let's see here. So I kind of wanted to break this up into two segments here. You know, with mm -hmm. regards to, you know, the game and whatnot, we kind of got that to talk with, uh, with regards to some of the units. But you know, <laughs> as as we've kind of said in the in, in the previous part of the uh, video, um, you have one of the uh, you know top YouTube channels in the industry. So, you know, as you know, I, I do everything and anything I can to promote uh, you know other YouTube channels in addition to trying to help others kind of get started if they kind of need some guidance or whatnot. So. You know, you coming from the top, you got some knowledge as far as how you how you got going to whatnot. What is some insight that you can provide to people that might be motivated or inspired to create a YouTube channel and do what we do as far as spreading the word with regards to some of this work? Mm, I guess I I know that there are like a lot of people who 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 are motivated to to make videos to to do YouTube. I don't encourage people to do it on a full-time basis like what I'm doing. I don't know if you are doing that on a full-time basis. Yeah. I'm doing it on a full-time basis. I don't have like any other job. And to be honest, I, like the money I make from YouTube right now is just enough to pay my bills and cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> the not. cigarettes, that's the biggest part there. The bills, eh, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> the bills and cigarettes. And, and, you know, maybe it's not, it's not enough where I'm staying. But I mean, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm, well, what I, what I would like to, you know, what I would say to the people who, who want to make videos is that you have to let go. Like for me, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I don't give a shit about what people think. You have to be yourself. You have to be honest. Honesty pays. Like you have to be honest. You, if you're going on YouTube and you're putting on an act, you're putting on a mask that is not you, it, you're going to have trouble upkeeping that mask you know you you have to be mm, i don't know if this is right but but you have to be like naked no not in like the literal sense of course but, you know you 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 the inner self you know have to be has to be naked to the viewers because when you are honest and 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 sincere with whatever you do the viewers will will see that they won't know that 
they they can feel it and they will support you. Like I I I like reply to practically every comment. Every com everybody matters. Everyone that watches you has an opinion of you. Anything they say, everyone matters. There's like I don't agree with like I I see some I mean, sure, when you're talking about big time YouTubers like PewDiePie or whatever, like you know, it's like thirty three million subscribers, there's no way he can reply to all of everyone, right? But we we don't have like a really really big community. Sure, twenty nine million downloads. I'm sure that like at least twenty million downloads were fake downloads or you know alternate accounts or whatever. Right. right. Mm, but I think that we're at a stage where we can, you know, our community is 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 still very young. It's still it's not big enough that we can't know everyone. You know. <clears throat> so it's 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 kind of good in a way that right now we're doing this we're doing YouTube like you and me, it's good that we're doing it at this stage because we get to know the people who started out this journey with us. You, you get what I mean? Yep, yep. Yeah, and it's 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 a good thing. So so I guess that's what what I have, that's what I have to say is like, love the people that love you. That's that's really very important. Yeah, definitely. And it's kind of funny because I I made a video the. Uh, a while back that talking about you as well as schizophrenic gamer where you guys have definitely a unique outlook or, 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 or how do I say a, a unique way of showing, you know, your, your, your channel, whatnot, your videos or whatnot. And, and I, and, and I told them, you know, Hey, you can't have feel, you can't, you cannot influence the world by trying to be like it. Everyone that's trying to put up a show, um, you know, it's, it's, it's only going to get you so far. The real you is what's, is what's going to matter at the end of the day. And, and that's what the people want. They don't want to, they don't want to see nobody fake. They want to. They want to see the real you. And if and if and if it's not what you thought it was going to be, I mean, if it's not as pretty as you thought it was going to be, you know, we're sorry, but it is what it is. So, is that? Yeah, yeah. I agree with you. It's like, don't try to be someone else. It's it's not going to work. And uh, I see like people ask me like I get messages like people say hey, promote my YouTube channel. I I look at his channel and there's one video. I don't. I'm not gonna promote a YouTube channel with one one video. I'm not even gonna say a word about it. Like, what? A, I say, like I promote your your YouTube channel and then and then like you give up because you don't get enough views. You don't become like an instant star overnight. I mean, to me, I feel that it's hard work. You have to persevere. You have to stay in there and like, like, I mean, after it will if if you you're doing if what you're doing is right then. People will catch on to it, and it will get, and and you will get more views, and you know, but don't expect that it, you know, you can be an instant instant star. It's n it's not gonna happen. Like you know, right? I mean, yeah. we, like even for me, I started what in in I think today I was reminded on Reddit, like someone said, it's my six month uploading some of four videos. My first video was uploaded on, on the first of December two thousand fourteen. Yep. And back then it was like it started out with what? Uh I think thousand, two thousand views or so. And and back then back then I still had a job, so it was okay. But like in January I had no job. In in mid January I had no job. My my my, my family business closed down. I had no job then. And YouTube was paying me what? Like it wasn't even enough for half it wasn't enough even enough for one week of cigarettes. And I was eating through my savings. I, I was eating through my savings. It wasn't easy. It was like, but I knew that this is what I wanted to do. I mean, I'm sure for you, this is what you want to do as well. Because what we do here, what, what we're doing on YouTube, it's not something that you can do, you know, it's not something that you can find out anywhere else. It's like no one is going to, you're not going to have this opportunity. Like we have the opportunity now. People... There are people who support our, our, our dreams, like what we want to do, and it's 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 just it's it's a really beautiful thing. <laughs> yeah, it definitely I, is. I hope that whoever wants to start out, that you can persevere and you can see the the results, the fruits when when you, when you realize that hey, there's so many people out there who care about what you want to do today and care and you make a difference in 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 these people's lives even if it was it, it was like 100 people in the beginning the 200 people and 300 people it's not something that you do outside on on an 8 to 5 job you don't make a difference to 200 people or 300 people or yeah. for whatever you you get what i mean yeah yeah i get it and it's it's uh 
it's crazy. It's, I, I tell people because I have a lot of people talk to me as well, right? And uh, uh, the one thing that I say, you know, they 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 get discouraged because, like I said, they they make a video and you know a week mm-hmm. goes by and they get a few views. And I tell you, you know, just just keep on going. You know, uh, you know, with challenge comes change. And at the end of the day, um, that first message that you get from that subscriber that states, "Hey, I just want to let you know that you're doing an outstanding job." and and, you know, it's because of your video that you uh, have helped me improve my game. I enjoy the game that much more, and, and I'm a and I'm a big, big fan of yours. I mean, when you get that first message, that is like the fuel to the fire. I mean, it, things, yes. don't, things don't get much better than that. And, and, and you know, on behalf of myself and YDCB, uh, I just want to say thank you to everybody that has been helping us throughout the stage. I mean, anything can happen. Put in the work, and, and things will come. Now, now, YDCB made the comment. He started in December. I actually started two months prior to that. And, you know, I don't even have a fifth <laughs> of his subscribers. Now, does that mean that I, you know, don't put in the work? No, you know, we, we put in, we both put in the work, you know, at the end of the day. But anything could happen. If you if you go out of your way to, to, to get back to the fans and get back to, um, you know, the people that have been supporting you since day one, you will see your channel grow. Regardless if it takes, uh, you know, you seven to eight months to where I am today, or if you're uh, blessed um, like YDCB has and has, you know, been able to grow his channel to, to the way it is today. So again, thank you guys so much. Um, the next one I wanted to kind of top off is, is the one is that always is a good, you know, finisher when it comes to the YouTube videos here. Uh, <laughs> you, you guys know, I mean, if you know, but I, uh, have a uh, guild called Epic fail, which we embrace <laughs> the fact of failing on the, on the, on the camera, uh, as you've, we talked prior to making this video, we have plenty of failures, um, when it comes to this stuff. So I want you to hit your viewers up right now with the biggest epic fail you've ever had in the game. Okay. Can't, we can't be talking about no ladies outside in, in, in the in game, the, in the game. What is the biggest epic fail you've ever had? Um, I've had a lot of fails. Yeah. Now, I'm, <laughs> now I'm taking a look at the units. Now we got a lot of them that are de ruined. Uh, but I think, I think, uh, a lot of them are de ruined actually, because there's just not enough runes to go around. Right. Like, Dragon has been a bitch, right? I mean, you know, like, rune farming is just such a bitch. What, I don't... Can't you be more generous with the runes? Yeah. It's like giving shit runes every day. But I think that in the game, like, my worst... I, I've actually said this before in one of my videos. But anyway, my biggest mistake was I fed... I, I, I foddered a Juno, right? I foddered a Juno. To Vela Jewel to make him six star. Oh. Juno was my second at five, all right. And back then there was no you YouTube, you know, there was no guides or anything. Even on Reddit, it was basically really vague. There was no community back then. It was like really young game. It's like <clears throat> I think it was like one million downloads or something. Really, and no one knows like Juno. What the fuck? She removes buffs. No one even knew Chloe was good. Back then, right? So right, right. it was all so about Rena. <laughs> yeah, what's the point of Juno? So I was like, yeah, fuck Juno, yeah. fat Juno to Villa Jewel. Dude, who <laughs> and now I think that was my. You know what I did? You know what I did when I realized when Chloe Meta came in? You know what I? I told come to us. Hey, what happened to my Juno? Yeah. I wrote them an email. I said, what the fuck? Fuck, man, where's my Juno? I put him in the storage. Now he's gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I showed them. I showed them this picture, you know, the monster collection picture. When you summon a monster, the, the box lights up, right? right? I showed them, you see, I have, I summoned a Juno. Where's where my Juno? Nice. What, what they, and they're what like, they said nope, he... nope, <laughs> no. Oh, man. Always they trying to the system. They, they told me that their records say that. <laughs> they actually know what happened, what happened to my Juno. <laughs> it's oh, so embarrassing. Oh, man. <laughs> hey man it's all good it's all good it, it's it's they, it had to happen so that we can forward you know six months down the road and be able to do this video so you can tell everybody your, your biggest fail so i appreciate you letting us know um let's go ahead and finish off the video with some shout outs you got any shout outs to to give out to uh anybody in the community or, or any of your fans or close uh, guildmates um yeah i have like so many shout outs yeah, hit like, up. Hit i want to say like of course a huge thank you to to all, all the the people that supported what I want to do. Like today actually today was like um today I hit like uh uh sort of like a, a milestone, you know? 
I am now able to pay for my bills and cigarettes. Yeah, congratulations! <laughs> hey, congratulations! Like I, I... <laughs> no, I, you just ask and I'll answer. Okay. Like... <laughs> Sounds good. All right, guys. So we need uh, we need our boy Whitey to be here to give us some shout outs here um, to anybody, our families, or friends, loved ones, anybody you want to shout out to, hit him up. Oh, me? I have to go now. Like who? I, <laughs> yeah. Who I want to shout out to? Yeah. Um, of course, of course. My guild, the you know, my guild has supported me a lot. Like I constantly get donations from my guild. It's so embarrassing, but you know, this this support me a lot like in terms of in terms of like even donations helping me you know share my channel and um like i don't know like everyone it's it's just amazing like uh, i'm getting so much help from people <laughs> it's it to me to me it's a weird weird thing because where i grew up all right no one helps other people for nothing sure. i'm not paying them anything but where i grew up no one helps anyone like if you should I grew up in a place where I learned not to give help unless I'm getting something out of it, like I'm getting paid for it, you know. But yeah. these people, they have been, they have been giving me help, like not they, they help me share my channel, share my videos, you know, to their countrymen, to their guildies. It's it's just I I don't know how to explain this feeling. It's sort of it's like surreal. And um, yeah, I would like shout out to the people that you know watch my views, that support my channel, support my cause. Uh, can I call it a cause? Support my dreams. And um, yeah, you were saying something about um, uh, who would, who would I like you to interview next? Yeah, who who do you got for a call? Out? So let's call somebody else. Let's see if we can I I more. think I think you should interview uh, James Fang, Cool Steel. Uh oh. <laughs> so let's <laughs> let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Why are you so us... angry every time? <laughs> no, no, and I don't know why I was so, and and I don't want to put anybody on blast, right? But I'll be real with you at the end. So I actually, um, Cold Steel was the first uh, person that I thought of. So he he has always been, um, you know, extremely uh, uh, very nice, generally a nice guy on, on the YouTube. I've always commented on his videos. You know, and he's always like reply back to me. I, it, it's I'm just fucking with him. <laughs> right, 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 right. He's he's instantly been been great with me, and 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 funny enough, we, um, you know, we were making arrangements to go ahead and, and start the, the this series off for this first one, but unfortunately, you know, something happened. Uh, you know, I can't really attest what happened to, did he get banned uh, i reported him yeah i know uh, I, don't, <laughs> I don't think he got banned so i i but for whatever reason he was un, unable to make the first time um to, yeah. to make the video and he hasn't you know spoken with me ever since but that is okay um you know obviously things happen and, and hopefully um you know whenever he gets the opportunity to uh I believe because because i've lost track of who's who's who in global like i've been away from global server for quite some time i don't know who's Who's who in global right now? So yeah. I can only like mention someone in Asian servers that um, I'd say close close to because the rest of them probably speak Chinese and it's gonna be hard for you to interview yeah. them. Yeah. So yeah. Well